was that? So what we got to do is now align from the center of this hole at 1.957 inches at zero. So zero would be the same as X. And what the fuck did I do wrong there? I didn't put an and in there. Undo. At 1.957, shift greater than zero degrees. There we go. And then at 2.2445 inches in the y-axis. Okay, so I'll put a circle there. Uh, at the end of that. Okay. And now we'll do the same again. This time at 11.4125 in the x-axis and 2.5565 in the y-axis. All right. Circle on the end point of that. save that real quick because this computer likes to shut off. Alright, so all we need to know is a line from the center of that hole to the center of that hole and then a line from the same holes on this drawing and then take a dimension, an angular dimension from that angle to that. And surprisingly, it's sitting in the machine only off by roughly one degree. That's pretty freaking close. So 1.0777 degrees is all I've got to rotate the drawing. Uh, I've got to rotate it down. So minus 1.077 degrees and then uh, we should be good to go. sit somewhere around there like that. So what we got to do now is open these four up for drawing, open up these two dowels here, and then finish size this. Alright, so all we got now is just this little nick right here that we're going to take off that was just hitting that thing, so we're just going to take that off. see if she fits. Still got to tap everything, but we can at least check to see if she fits now. 
All right, let's try that one. So far, so good. I don't have any more 7 16 taps and I ain't making a trip to town. So I'm just going to be real careful tapping this last freaking hole. Alright, so the two through holes are 3 8. I mean the through dowels, not through holes. I have a lot better tap. <clears throat> I gotta shorten these uh, flywheel bolts about a quarter of an inch. Also, gotta learn how to turn the switch on. So after seven times I finally got it. Um, I kept going this way and if I had indexed it one the other way I would have got it. So eh, it is what it is.
that's just for now. We'll actually torque them in later, but that's just to get it together. All right, so I got to shorten these dowels up a little bit. I just rough made them. I got to shorten them up to about an inch and a half. is just to clear where the start is at and what we'll do is we'll just bring a piece of aluminum out here and take it all up and fill in the hole. I guess I'm going to come back in here and clean up but we'll build a little piece that just covers that up and then uh, the starter when it engages will up up in here so we might as well whack these two little ears off. That's good enough for what it's got to do. And then we'll take it in here. I don't want it is just to keep the crap from getting in there. I'm not clutching it really. Alright, so you know the cover works. It's on. It's covering up the hole. That's all that matters. Starter fit. And uh, we've got to get some longer bolts. And then the last piece we've got to do is, is the uh, sleeve. And we've got to turn this down from inch and seven sixteenths to inch and three eighths. And that's the last of this. All right, so I'm sitting up on this, uh, <clears throat> hell, I don't know what you call this piece. The sleeve part, I guess, that the uh, throw-up bearing runs on. And, <clears throat> oh, ended up sticking just a little shim in and I've got that as good as I'm gonna get it all right that's what you call close that shoe clear as long as you don't hit this all matters So, alright, there we are. So that's turned down to an inch and three eighths now. So, and it's cast iron too. So, it finished up real nice. Perfect. 
Okay, so the owner is going to have to get a new gasket for here, but for now I'm just going to worry about getting this thing back together and seeing how she all lines up. So this little uh, stud, I guess is the word, is what holds this on. And uh, it's kind of hard to do this one-handed. But anyway, and yes, I've looped the o-ring. There we go. And that stops the throw-out bearing from rotating. And then the hydraulic lines come in here. And this travels in and out. So instead of the old mechanical linkage, that's how they work. All right, and now what you want to do is measure Man, this is hard to do backwards. All right, so what you want to do now is measure from there to there. Okay, so 2.59, we'll call it 2.6. Close enough. Where's the camera? <clears throat> so we'll call it uh, 2.6. And then we'll put the clutch in and measure the distance from the clutch to the bell housing and see if we're going to make any adjustment. So this pilot bearing is about the greatest uh, coincidence in history. It's the same as a flathead Ford. So I never even had to touch it. It went straight into the uh, Kubota, bell, uh, Kubota flywheel and it fit the uh, Jeep tranny. Never had to do anything to it. Guess what? I don't have bolts for the clutch. I have to take a trip to town. All right. Alright, so here's our moment of truth. So we got uh, 3.631. 3.631 minus 708. Minus 2.6. 323, so we are 120 thousandths too far out. And I think we can just put those shims in behind the clutch. So the, uh, so the hydraulic throw-out bearing kit comes with these shims, and that's exactly what those are for. And all you do is you just stack some of these shims in behind the throwout bearing to come up with your uh, distance which is 150 thousandths to 200 thousandths from this finger to the throwout bearing so it's pretty simple after that so this thing's good to go alright so we need to be 2.89 uh, 
uh, actually 2.89 minus, uh, let's split the difference, 0.175. So we need to be 2.71, 2.715 between there and there, somewhere in that range. Okay. Let's try two shims. So let's go with uh, two of those and see where that gets us. All right. All right, we'll go this way. Three point six, three point four six, three point four six minus point seven one for that, two point seven five. I forgot what number I needed. <laughs> two point five eight five. So two point five eight five. So. Now these shims come with the uh, throw out bearing, so we'll stick one in and we'll see where that gets us. Alright, so now we're at three and three eighths, so three point three seven five minus point seven one, two point six six. So we need one more shim, it looks like. All right, let's try our luck again. Three point four fifty six minus point seven one two point seven four six. You know what? I'm calling that good. That is as close as that needs to get. All right, so there we go. So that is, I'm calling that done. So the uh, throw out bearing and everything on here. He can plumb this. He's going to have to do the rest of it. I've got all the depth set. That's good to go. I'll throw the parts back in the box and that is set. So this thing is ready to get out of here. Time to move back onto a different project.